Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain how to get started and how to use the Dawa's Smart PSS for your NVRs, DVRs, and cameras. Right, so I downloaded from Dawa Wiki. I'm using the Windows platform. The version that is going to be downloaded, it will be shown shortly. All right, for your reference, this is the version that I will be demonstrating. All right, so I'm just going to double click it and get started. Now the Smart PSS system gives me two options. The Smart PSS, which is the management system, and then the storage service, which is the PC NVR. So it acts as a video storage server. I'm not going to be using that. I'm just going to be using Smart PSS. Right, so when doing the installation, you will get a Windows security alert. I do allow access for Smart PSS. Now it requires a password for me to use it. And very important to say the auto login after registration, otherwise it will keep prompting you for the password. There are some security questions which you can use so that you can authenticate yourself if you've forgotten your password. Now here is the shortcut. It asks for the user account control approval. You can also disable that in your user account menu. Anyway, now as I log in, it takes me to my home screen here. The default username is admin. Mine, I already had a previous setup of Smart PSS. So yours, you might need to just select that. Right, now I've logged in. Now the default layout of Smart PSS looks as follows. And also it is maximized. What I mean by that is if I press the Windows key, notice how I now can see my taskbar. So many people may not like this type of layout. Now to change that, I go to the gear here here for the global settings and then over here are the global settings for each one of these parameters so maybe you don't want it to open as a full screen maybe you just want it as a maximum window then it will no longer have that uh, full screen so if I close it and then I reopen it notice how I now have my taskbar here at the bottom now, why I'm showing that is there's other important settings over here. So if I go to local path, this is very important. The default path for saving your uh, downloaded footage that you've extracted from your NVR will be in your C drive. Now, many people don't like that. They may want a specific folder. So for example, I've actually changed that. So I've made it in downloads and I've just made a folder called Dawa Incidents Record. So that means that when I download the footage, which I'll still show a bit later, then I've now set the path. So this is where I can change the global settings for the software, right? Then on the top right, I also have the resources used on my computer. So uh, there it is, 10%, 22%. Then I've got the user. So you've got uh, some settings there if you want to switch the user. And if you want to look through the manual now, interestingly enough, the help manual over here is the complete manual, which spans 269 pages. But if I go online for the Dawa manual, I notice the one that is on the Dawa wiki is only 96 pages. But anyway, that may change. All right. So over here, we've got the icons. You can have a favorite section. For example, if I want to use a live view in my favorites, I'm dragging it to the top and now I can build up whatever I choose as my favorites. And I'm going to go through the most important in order for you to get started with your configuration. So the first thing is the devices. So I'm going to click on devices. And at the moment, I already have three devices already linked to the Smart PSS interface. Now, the beauty of Smart PSS and the purpose for using it is that I can have lots of NVRs and DVRs all listed here and that means I can configure and access all the DVRs and NVRs on my network and cameras. Now over here it says device type, it says NVR, NVR, over here it says IPC. So I'm showing that you can also connect directly to an individual camera and you can also configure it, stream it and download footage if it's got an SD card in that camera. Right. So the way to do that is one can do an auto search or one can do an ad. So I'm going to delete these so long. And I'm going to say auto search. Now the auto search is going to look on the network within the range, which is stated here, 192.168.8, all the way up to uh, from zero to 255. And the reason being is because the computer is in that 
IP range. Now, why this is important is if you go onto another network and you plug in your laptop, at least you will know within which range you're looking at. You can also change this if you want to. And you can do a search again, but in my case, that's not going to be useful because my NVRs and cameras are in the 8 range. So if I do the search, it's going to bring up all the NVRs or devices that could be connected to this uh, smart PSS. So that also implies that if I've connected or linked certain NVRs to the smart PSS, I may have this set up on a laptop and then when I go to my other sites other NVRs will come online and I'll quickly explain more about what I mean shortly so I'm going to add this and it's going to ask me for the username and then the password so I'll need to know those things and notice how it has gone green there and it's showing me that I'm now connected now because I'm on this network and I've logged in correctly to this NVR it is green now say for example I've got multiple sites the other NVRs which would be displayed over here would just be offline it would say offline when I connect to those networks by either uh, connecting remotely or by visiting those premises then those NVRs will come online when I plug in my laptop as long as that the username and password was correct. Now what I'm going to do now is add another NVR and I'm going to purposively put the wrong password. So I'm going to put the correct username and I'm going to put a password which is incorrect. Now what it does is it does add it to the list but it just says they're invalid username or password. So that means that I would have to come over here and just make sure that I have the correct password which I now have completed. Now notice that it does also give you the option to change the port. Some people have changed their port numbers on the NVR. You can change the port number over here if the NVR's port number was also different make sure they match otherwise one will not be able to log in right now these are two NVRs but what happens if I would like to access a camera so I'm going to specifically log into this camera I also will need the username and password and now I'm linked to two NVRs and a camera so I will be showing some of the configuration for the NVRs and also for a camera just in case you will be using it with a camera now you can also manually add a device and you can just give it a name and then that would also mean you would need the correct IP address for that particular device. Right, so I'm not going to do that now. Now all of this is working, I'm connected so I can now go back to the home screen and there it shows me all the options which are available to me. Now the next most important one is the device configuration. I've, I've linked to the devices, now I want to configure the devices. So notice that the devices are all listed over here and it says here default group and notice the icon. This is a camera and this is it looks pretty much like a server because these are two NVRs. In this list I can now interrogate and change any of the settings which are available there. So let's go to NVR 253. Now I can also do an upgrade and I can also a link to the web so if I press the link to the web option it takes me to the login of that NVR so if I log into it notice that this is my same login using a web browser so if you wanted to log into your NVR using a web browser well this would be the interface this is the interface on the newer NVRs Right, so if you are logged into your NVR using the web browser then one could go to camera and if I did a device search all the cameras would be listed and I could configure the cameras and set up the NVR I could change the image and the encoding why am I showing that because the same is sitting here so SmartPSS gives me that same control but it allows me to connect to multiple NVRs and cameras at the same time so let me go to this one and I select camera and I select remote device notice it is bringing up a similar window where it searches for the cameras I can add them I can also see what's already connected to the NVR so it's offering similar functions although the interface looks a bit different obviously the encoding you can change the bit rate the resolution the same things that you could manipulate using the web browser or if you were connected directly to the NVR sitting in front of it with a monitor and a mouse while well, the settings are also here at SmartPSS. So you can do the overlay 
all the things you would have normally done when you set up your NVR. So this is the nice thing about Smart PSS. Right, now if I go to event, now this is very important. I'm going to show you one of the challenges that I've encountered. Now over here it says channel one. Please make sure that when you are setting up an NVR that you go to Smart PSS and make sure this is enabled. So it says channel 1 enable. Then check that channel 2 is enabled and also check that the record channel corresponds to the channel number. Now you can copy the configuration to other channels. For example, you can copy current configuration, but I prefer to do it manually. So that means that if I go to channel 3, I make sure that it's recording channel 3 over here. Now now on the video detection it also has the alarm output which means that there is a relay or two or three or four depending on the NVR DVR you have and that would necessitate a alarm output which means if there's video detected if I set this to on the relay would close and it would send a signal to some other device for example. Now over here I have my alarm input and output. I prefer to set this up using the web interface but uh, if I wanted the alarm input I would select that. What that does is if I've got another device maybe a motion detector or a door switch I can set it that it's connected to the input of my NVR and then I would set that up. I actually did set this up and that was a panic and then it records that so my NVR becomes a relay station now I've got detailed videos explaining all the alarm functions so I'm just going to quickly go through this I'm not going to go in a lot of detail now the alarm output very important there's a relay one two or three or four depending on the type of NVR you got and if there's a certain activation the relay will close and you can use that to do many things a light a siren a buzzer whatever suits your fancy now moving along if I go to storage you can set the schedule now this is very important because obviously you want to set the uh, schedule for your NVR you can do that from smart PSS as well so I can select the channel for example and then now I choose what it is that I want to highlight for example if I want it to be regular recording then I will just highlight that as follows notice I'm highlighting that that row. If I want uh, motion detection, it's telling me it's yellow. It's already been highlighted. If I want to erase what I've just highlighted, notice that it goes to the eraser. If I want to select another function, motion detection and alarm, then I highlight. So I can select these depending on what it is that I want and then I can configure this. At the moment I've set it for IVS, so intelligent video surveillance as well as motion detection. If yours is all green it means that it's going to be recording all the time. If yours is yellow it means it's only going to be recording when there's motion detection. So you can set that up and you can also set the times and dates for when you want the schedule to be operational. Right, the hard drive manager just showing me uh, how the size of the hard drive and then I've got the system here, the timestamp and I like to set this to NTP server because often I find the NVRs lose time so I make sure that I have this as a lookup and I make it that it looks it up every 600 minutes. It doesn't have to look it up often as long as it looks it up uh, every few days it's fine. Right, so all of the settings are here where it says device configuration. Now earlier I said you can also configure a camera. So over here I have a camera. Notice the settings are pretty similar. So the only difference here is intelligent analysis. Notice that I'm connecting directly to this camera now. So I'll be configuring a camera. So over here it says intelligent analyze. So if I click on that. It's bringing up another window. Now this is for your IVS, your intelligent video surveillance. Now the reason why I chose this camera, I specifically chose it because it has some tripwires set. So I would I would select that to be on and then I say next. And now here is the view of that camera. Now personally I find it's easier to do this using the web interface. But I will just show I have some rules here. Here are the rules and it, this works very well. Now just showing you the web login. For example, if I go to the AI on that NVR and I say parameters, 
I say IVS. Now the channel which I was referring to is channel 4 and he has the interface to set those rules. I just prefer this interface. I find it's easier to work with than the Smart PSS. But the Smart PSS does also offer that functionality. Right, so you can do that using Smart PSS, but what you won't find is if you try to find that setting here when I'm connecting directly to the NVR, notice it is not here. So that means that if you do want to do a smart rules and trip wires, etc., you'd need to connect to the camera directly because there I've connected to the camera directly and there gives me that intelligent analysis. Right, so if I say plus again, I've now connected to my devices, I've configured my devices and then I'm pretty much ready to go. You can do elaborate event configurations where you can set lots and lots of uh, different rules, etc. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to say plus again. And now what I'm going to do is show you the live view and then I will be showing the playback. So if I go to live view, it's showing me all the devices that are connected to this smart PSS. So if there were some NVRs here that were offline, they would still be here, but it wouldn't allow me to stream because obviously either I had the wrong password or I wasn't on the network. So let's stream a few things. So let's start with this. I'm going to stream over there and this is a single camera. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, stream over here and you can set up your wall in any fashion you want. At the bottom here, you can see there are some controls. Now I'm going to uh, go over here and say uh, main gate. Now why I'm showing you this is that notice that I've got this camera over here, these two cameras over here. So I'm populating this wall in any fashion that I want. For example, I could go to another NVR and pick and choose certain cameras that are useful to me. So that means that I do not have to follow the order that the NVR is set out at. Now, I'm going to open another window and go to live view again. And the reason I'm doing that is I just want to show you a possible problem that you might run into. Notice that I'm opening even another live view and uh, let me open another camera. Here's another camera. So here I've got a live view, a live view and a live view. And all that is happening is I'm starting to burden my computer's resources. If I show you my GPU, it is starting to load up. And why this is important is you may find that these windows are currently streaming, but maybe you're doing some other settings or you've left your computer, but one hasn't actually closed these windows here. So just be aware that if you find your computer getting a bit sluggish, just note that the Smart PSS doesn't notify you there's an ongoing stream over here. I mean, I could just carry on adding these. And if I open all of these windows now, uh, notice that my resources are going to be pretty highly utilized. If I now go to playback and I'd like to do a playback, um, notice that these are all still streaming. So if I show you the uh, resources on my uh, computer, you can see it's still high. Just to be aware of that. So it's a good idea to close these things down when you are when you're not using them. All right. Now having a look at the playback, I can interrogate a camera directly if it has a SD card or I can uh, interrogate footage that has already been recorded. For example, I just click there. If you try and search without it being clicked, you get an error which says, please select at least one channel. So you must select the channel you want. Notice that it is giving me the option of what type of recording am I looking for? That is very useful. And then the mainstream or substream and then the date and time. So if I was looking for footage in on the 1st of November, I'd have to select an earlier date. Right, so I'm saying across the road, I'm selecting that and I'm going to do a search and over here I will get some footage. Now there is a recorded footage and if I want to download it, all I do is I take the scissor option here, I select it and, and it, it gives me a range and then I press the scissor again and now it's asking me to download it. Notice how it's taking me to the folder which I had set at the beginning of the video. I prefer to use MP4, although the default is ASF. You will need the smart player if you do download it using the ASF and I just use the MP4 and then I can download it. If you are going to use the native format and use the smart player, although the smart player does also play MP4, then you should download the all tools from Daiwa's wiki and just select smart player and the smart player allows you to interrogate those files outside of smart PSS. Right now, if you want to add some users to the smart PSS, you can go to user 
and you can set the different profiles and the privileges that each user has so you just say plus one and it'll add a user and you can say what it is that they can or can't do all right so that's my quick walkthrough of smart pss and i hope that was helpful if you'd like to see other videos on dawa cameras please check out my playlist on youtube thank you